and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the books I hope you're all doing double thumbs up um today is a massive library haul I've been using my library so much this year and in particular I've been you <laughs> I've been using my library to put reservations on so I mean in January I just spent a lot of time watching people's best books of the year popping things on um, the library reservations of books that people had mentioned that they'd read and loved last year now the women's prize is rolling around and I've been popping some reservations on books that I think might be eligible for the women's prize or might be on the long list and yeah just been using it massively to get loads and loads of books out um, and a lot of those books came in in the past two weeks and I've been hoarding them to show you what I've got so let's start actually we'll start with this one this I've, I've literally just mentioned this in my last video uh, where I was talking about books that I think are going to be on the women's prize long list this is Monica Ali's um, love marriage Monica Ali is the um, author of Brick Lane this is only on a two week so any sort of new books seem to come out on a two week loan period which like sounds like a long time but when you're in the middle of about six other books <laughs> it's not that long time so I need to get a wiggle on with this um, and this is a, a, a book about two um, two doctors um, Yasmin and Jo they have met at work um, but they're both from different cultures um, and it's about the sort of like heading towards their wedding and their families coming together and learning from each other and things like that sounds like it's going to be amazing it's a big chunky one but I'm very much looking forward to reading that so need to get on with it this next book um so this has come as part of i got sent a proof copy of alison ware's most recent book i think it's called like the white queen that'll be in my um book haul which will be going up a bit later on in the year and i was like oh she writes about queens does she i wonder if she's written about my six favorite queens um <coughs> henry the eighth's wives and she has she's done a whole entire series called six Tudor queens um starting with Catherine of Aragon the true queen she says so I got this out on reservation I thought I'll see how I get on with it and then if I do get on with the series then I've got five other ones to read um but as it arrived I read the first paragraph and a bit and god I wanted to drop everything and read it instantly um so yeah I'm very much looking forward to getting into this series this isn't a sort of genre of sort of I, I like a historical fiction but I haven't read, read much of this sort of historical fiction of a specific period based on true people like so i'm looking forward to it yeah i'm excited about that um then <laughs> this arrived i don't know it, even so much so i was like was that supposed to be for me or was that supposed to be for somebody else this is uh, three hours by rose rosamund lupton i can't remember why i put a reservation on this um it says in rural somerset in the middle of a blizzard the unthinkable happens a school is under siege pupils and teachers barricade themselves into classes the library the theater the headmaster lies wounded in the library unable to help his trapped students and staff outside a police psychiatrist must identify the gunman while parents gather desperate for news in three intense hours all must find the courage to stand up to evil and save the people that they love i mean it sounds quite good it's not it doesn't sound like something I would normally read but I can't I don't know how this has ended up on my library reservations when I'm looking at all of these I think oh yeah I got that because of that or I saw that on that person's channel or oh yeah that might be and I don't know why but hey we might get around to it and if we do we'll see how that goes um then I've got the remains of the day by Kaju Ishiguru um David and I read aloud earlier this year in January um remains of the day <clears throat> and I'd always no <laughs> we read never let me go and I'd always wanted to read the remains of the day I've got it on, well, I put it on a reservation on my Libby app for an audiobook. So whether or not, if that comes in quicker, I might end up listening to it. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy Kazuo Shiguru's writing and very much enjoyed reading Never Let Me Go. And I've always heard that this is very good. So it's about, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Lauren and the book says very good <laughs> um this is uh following a butler I believe um and he's yeah in the summer of 1956 Stevens the aging butler of Darlington Hall embarks on a leisurely holiday that will take him in deep into the countryside and into his past so yeah I'm uh, looking forward to that they've got these new sort of front covers out based on you remember the Clara and the Sun one which was red with a little sun in the corner they've also got a never let me go cover like this as well but yeah, and then I will probably watch the film of that afterwards. Um, this next one I got out because this is the group book for the Irish Readathon that I'm taking part in at the moment. Taking part in, yep. I haven't started reading it yet. Um, and this is uh, Boys Don't Cry by Fiona Scarlett. Um, it's a very, very quick little blurb. Th they say boys don't cry, but Finn's seen his dad do it when he thinks that no one's looking, so that's not true. And isn't it okay to be sad when bad things happen? They say boys don't cry, but you might. Um... And yeah, very, very short chapters told from the perspective of two characters, Joe and Finn. Um, and yeah, looking forward to, to reading that as well. Particularly like when other people are reading at the same time. It's lovely to have a chat about it and enjoy that sort of thing. Next one. 
I think I've got this out because I think Eric said that he thinks this is going to be on the women's prize long list. It was either Anna or Eric who said this and it's Tenderness by Alison McLeod. <laughs> the size of it. The size of it is absolutely humongous. Oh, although actually, oh no, it is massive. It's almost 600 pages long. Yeah, it's 593 pages long. Um, so yeah, it is 1930 and D.H. Lawrence, exiled from his native England, is dying. As the Mediterranean glitters beneath his window, he drifts in and out of visions of the past. He relives the early years of his marriage when, in an English countryside taut with the threat of war, his desperation drove him to commit a terrible betrayal. And there is another place and time, more like, the dream, more like a dream than a memory, of a woman on an Italian balcony, her chestnut red hair red with summer. And then we're looking at 1959. Jackie Kennedy and her husband have already been marked out for greatness. Passing through New York, she slips into a hearing where a book, not a man, is brought to trial. In Cambridge University Library, the moon bright outside, a young woman and a young man meet amid the stacks and make love in the restricted section. <whistles> They're different stories loop and entangle under a jury until a jury enters a court and then look, the world looks on. As the trial unfolds on both sides of the Atlantic Society asks and continues to ask, is it obscenity or is it tenderness? The story of Lady Chatterley's lover and its ripple effect across half a century. Tenderness is a celebration of the transformative and triumphant power of fiction. God, it sounds very involved, but also there is so, like this font is so small. So not only is it only 600, it's only 600, nearly 600 pages. It's also a tiny little font as well. Will she get round to it? Will it be on the women's prize long list? We'll see. Uh, then I've got What It Feels Like for a Girl by Paris Lees. Um, this is a fiction book written by Paris. And when I opened it up to have a little look at it, the first, um, it's signed and it's by Cat Paris. And it says, I'm not a prostitute, but I can give you what you want. Um, and it's written in sort of like, well, the vicar says Lord Byron wore a bit of a gay boy and I had to bite my tongue so I didn't burst out laughing. Says he wore a right bugger. After we led, old mother Hubbard goes, he didn't mean what you're thinking, duck. He meant he wore a rogue, a ladies man, someone with loose morals. I thought, okay, but they do say he were bisexual and here he were into that black magic. Serves him right for naming me after him, eh? I was born on the exact same day as him, 200 years later, with Capricorns. So it's written in that sort of vibe the whole way through, like stream of consciousness, but also in an accent. Um, 13 year old Byron needs to get away and doesn't care, care how. Sick of being beaten up by lads for talking like a puff after school. Stick of, get, stick of dad, the weightlifting womanizing Gaz and Mam who pissed off to Turkey like Shirley Valentine. Sick of all the people in Hucknall who shuffle about Hucknall like the living dead, going on about marriages that they're too skint to do and marriages they're too skint to leave. <clears throat> going on about kitchens they're too skint to do do up and marriages they're too scared to leave it's a new millennium madonna's music is top of the charts and there's a whole world to explore and byron's happy to beg steal and skank into a roller coaster ride of hedonism life explodes like a rush of ecstasy as byron escapes to nottingham's kinetic underworld and discovers the east midlands premier podium dancer come hellraiser the mesmerizing lady die but when the come down finally kicks in byron arrives at a shocking encounter that will change life forever Sounds great, doesn't it? And yeah, these books that sort of are written in an accent, I always find I do better when I'm reading them aloud because sometimes I feel like it gets a bit lost in my brain when I'm reading it somewhere from the words being in the page and actually making sense. So I sometimes need to read that well, but sounds great. Um, next up is Red Dust Road uh, by Jackie Kay. This is an autobiographical journey of Jackie Kay's. I've got this out because I recently read um, Slug by Holly McNish. Absolutely loved it. One of my favourite books, of the, the, probably, it is the best book that I've read this year so far. Made me feel so fizzy and excited as I was reading it. And at the back of that book, um, she has a sort of like additional reading material section. And um, this featured quite high at the top and talks and is all about Jackie Kay um, and uh, her life autobiographically told through little memoir bits and things like that. Jackie Kay's a poet, so I was surprised, and Holly McNiss is a poet, I was surprised to see that this isn't poetry. Um, but yeah, looking forward to reading it, regardless of it being poetry. Um, the, this is, I can't ever say this title without giggling. Our Souls at Night, um, by Kent Haruf. This appeared, I think, on Emma from Drinking By My Shelves, favourite books of the year. Um, it's a tiny little slip of a thing. And this is a love story and has been made into, excuse me, <coughs> and has been made into a um, Netflix series about two older people who come together to sleep in the same bed at night because they feel lonely. Um, and yeah, it's supposed to be a lovely love story and I'm looking forward to reading it. Then I've got Legend Born 
by um, Tracy Dion. Not normally my sort of book, but I was uh, watching Liv uh, from the Book Nook, her best books of 2021, and she mentioned this. And I thought, maybe it's time for me to get into this sort of stuff, like high fantasy epic type thing. Some legacies are meant to be broken. After her mum dies in an accident, 16-year-old Bree Matthews wants to escape. A residential po programme for bright high schoolers seems like the perfect opportunity until she witnesses a magical attack to her very first night on campus. The mage's failures unlock Bree's own unique magic and buried memory from the night her mother died. Now Bree will do whatever it takes to discover the truth, even infiltrate the Legendborn. But when the Legendborn reveal themselves as descendants of King Arthur's knights and foretold a magic war, Bree must decide how far she'll go for the truth. Should she use her magic to take society down or join the heart or join the fight? The first book in a heart-pounding YA fantasy series from debut author Tracy Dion. What I will say though, this text, look how small it is. Um, so yeah, we'll see. This this sounds like a book I would have read when I was younger, but we'll see how we get on with it. Now, I've got this out from the from the library before and not got on with it, and I think I might. <laughs> this is in the Dream House, which I know is very beloved. Carmen Mar uh, Maria Mac Macardo, and I had a little flick through it, and it's got the Dream House as. Well, let me read. It's a memoir. Let me read this to you because it's so hard to explain. An engrossing and wildly innovative memoir of Love Gone Bad, In the Dream House traces the full arc of a harrowing relationship with a charismatic but volatile woman. Struggling to make sense of how what happened to her shaped the person she became, Mikado became, became, Mikado considers her religious adolescence, unpacks the stereotype of lesbianism as safe and utopian, and explores the stigma of openly discussing abuse in queer relationships. Each chapter views her experience through a different narrative lens as she holds events up to the light and examines them from, legal ang from different angles. She casts a critical eye over legal proceedings, fairy tales, Star Trek and Disney villains, as well as iconic works of film and fiction, infusing everything with her characteristic wit, playfulness and openness to inquiry. The result is a wrenching, riveting book that explodes our ideas about what a memoir can do and be. And each of these sections is sort of told as a different thing. So like Dreamhouse as a stranger comes to town, Dreamhouse as a stoner comedy, Dreamhouse, uh, Dreamhouse as cycle, Dreamhouse as man versus self. I'll see how I get on with it. I'll see. And then the last one, I've got Learwife by J.R. Thorpe. Now, I, I wondered if this might be um, long listed for the Women's Prize, so I got it out from the library. And then, again, it was Eric or Anna, maybe Eric, um, said that they thought that this would be on the long list. Uh, when it arrived, it's a uh, larger text. That's another thing I love about libraries, is that you can get books out, like recent books, in big font. So I wear glasses all the time, but when I'm in the bath, I can't wear my glasses because steamy. So this means I can read this in the bath, which is lovely. Um, so yeah, this is about King Lear. Um, King Lear is dead, driven mad and betrayed. His three daughters too, broken in battle, but someone has survived. Lear's queen, exiled to a nunnery, uh, nunnery years ago, written out of history, her name forgotten. Now she can tell her story. Through her grief and rage, many threat may though her grief and rage may threaten to crack the earth open, she knows she must seek answers. Why was she sent away in shame and disgrace? What has happened to Kent, her oldest friend and ally? And what will become of her now in this place of women? To find peace, she must reckon with her past and make a terrible choice, one upon which her destiny and that of the entire abbey rests. So there we go. So those are the books that I've got out from the library recently. Loads, aren't they? I don't even know I'm going to be able to pick them up. Let me know. Um, let me know if you get books out from the library. Let me know if you've read any of these books that I've mentioned. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all again soon for another victory video. Goodbye. Now I've got to pose with these. I don't know how. This is how.